Oops. Voilà. Hello. I'm driving. Sorry. Hi, Portia. So you can hear her right fine? Good. Yo. Hi. 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 How you doing? Good. Look at that smile. Brighten up a room. Brighten up a Zoom. What are, you, what are you doing out so late? Uh, one of my boxers' wives died in their sleep. I actually was going to call you after I was right next to your dad's shop there. Um, Mickey's Mickey's wife, Deb. What? Yeah. I, I no. Don't know. It, in her sleep Thursday night. So. That's terrible. Uh, oh. I just saw them Thursday. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I had to go to the viewing because I can't go to the funeral tomorrow because I have uh, oh boy classes. But yeah, that's why I'm out. I'm heading home. That sucks. I, like, I know. It's so sad. We're always, oops, we're always thinking about the boxers, and it's like their caretakers are under just as much duress, you know. Yeah, she had a heart attack or something, or a stroke, uh, right? Something I can't remember. She had, she just had her hip replaced, and you yeah. know they're all booster fanatics and vaccine. Oh. They, every, I don't, I don't know, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But too much. I, just, I, I literally saw her that day. You know, she's such a little sweet cupcake. So, so yeah. sad. Mm. How you doing, uh, Michael? And so somehow I don't know, I'm trying to still figure it out. Somehow uh they took me off the connect group thing, so that's what happened last week. I'm not I'm not for some reason not on it anymore or not on the emails and the website or anything. So waiting to hear kind of hear back from them and see what's going on with that. Maybe I've been swearing too much. Okay. Know, maybe I got punished. Um I doubt it. Yeah. Don't don't know what's going on there, but no. we'll figure that out. It doesn't matter. Monday's Monday. Won't yeah. change anything. Um, that's good. Uh, yeah, so we just, I don't know. We will know when we know. Um, that's something I was going to do anyway last week. Was, I was just thinking about going on anyway, but I was kind of waiting for them. I never heard back, so. Something I was like, I would travel a lot uh, the past few weeks and and kind of all over. In New York, up uh, you guys obviously, and then um, uh, Tennessee, and then Louisiana, and I flew right back in here, and I was down and be in San Diego. And so anyway, I just been away from the house for a while, and uh, jokingly, a topic came up of like this, like world's best coffee and world's best this and the best, all the stuff you see on the signs of places, the world's best burrito. And, and it was kind of just jokingly coming up like, how dare these people? Like, who wears the checks and balances on the best coffee? Like, who, who's coming in here that tasted it, gave them the award to put on the window that they have the world's best coffee? 
or whatever the sign may be in the that's why I wrote that, that I made that little image of the best of the best and then I wrote the fucking audacity and uh I kind of have two thoughts on it, two sides of it. One, I think anything like best employee of the month or best this or best that. I mean, there is there is a competitive um, element to these things, right? Like to keep on pushing the, the limits of what is the best of something. Uh, I just, I just don't, I don't think that's being used much. I think it's so freely being used as, as the way of just using it because it's not checked. There is no balance. There's, there's nobody checking on any quality of anything, really. It's just they're allowed to say it, and nobody's saying anything about it. I mean, you can say something in a review or something like that, but um, I say it laughingly as, as simple as, like, the world's best coffee going to gas station. You try it, and it tastes like the bottom of a burnt, a burnt coffee thing. It's like, how long has it been sitting here? A month. It's terrible. It's like the the exact opposite of world's best coffee or, or world's best hot dog stand or all these things that come up. And it's like uh, I got thinking of where does that, <clears throat> how far does that go into everything we do? Like how far does the checks and balances of the quality or the 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 integrity of um, a service we do or uh, provide or something we say or any of it. Like how far does that deeply go in the psychology of it? If it can start off with something as simple and really who who's checking? I mean, you can say world's best um, massage therapist. Like you can pretty much say whatever you want here in America. They probably starting to spread really everywhere, but you can pretty much get, get away with saying anything you want and nobody's really going to call you out on it. Um, like I said, you might get a bad review if you do a bad job. But let's just say you live in the mediocre and nobody knows the difference in your clients. Yeah, they're, they're good. So still not checking you as being the best. Like that's a big, bold statement. Um, holding yourself in so holding yourself in such high regard of like, I'm the best, but but really, are you checking yourself? Is anybody checking you? Is there any checks and balances on the, the fact that you say I'm the world's best golf instructor? Like we have these things in my ex business. It was like magazines came out every year and <clears throat> it was, it was the top 50, top 100 instructors in the country. And then there was top 50 in each section of PGA and then they had the club fitter the same thing and every year it'd come out and everybody boast it and put up but really come to find out in that industry it was it was the magazine article writer this Matt dude that that made the decisions and they were really based off of who he hung out with who he liked and who his cronies were and um you know, who was shaking whose hand and where he was getting on golf courses and this takes and that. And you can really see it because every year it'd be the same. The top people would be the same. They never rotate or change. And you thought to yourself, you know, how could that, could that really be possible? Maybe, maybe the best 10 people are always the best 10 people at something. Or maybe the checks and balances on what we think is the best of the best just don't exist in the way we think they exist. Um, like what is the standard of being the best every year? We talk about like continued education and some practices where <clears throat> your profession makes you go get X amount of credits. We had that in golf. Continue education, like make you be the leader and you have to go sit in these X amount of credit accreditations for a year, but you got to pay for them to get in them to the people that are telling you you have to have them. Um, so I'm, I'm you know, where is the, where is the real checks on that? If it's the foundation that's making you do the accreditation is also making you pay them as a business to do it. Is it the best? Is it the, is it the best you can be? Is it the best amount of information? Is it the best continued education? Is it the best fucking coffee? I don't think so. I think the audacity of us to be able to use this shit 
out there and just say we are freely because we're a free country and we we get to say whatever we want. Nobody can fucking challenge us. And I think it lends itself to the bigger issue <clears throat> that we just think we're the best. Like, and I mean at anything. I don't care if it's you think you're the best at wiffle ball or down to the best employee that your company's ever seen. I don't care where your mind falls in it, but it lends our, it, I think this whole idea lends itself to uh, allowing us to be soft in our own expectation for what we think is the best of us for what we do. What is our standard? Can we have people write that down? And then like, do you think that that, that that would be a very good read if we had a room of hundred people like, all right, everybody write down their standard of excellence. I think we have a lot of short blank papers. Just kind of like that exercise we always talk about, like write down five awesome things about yourself. People have a hard time doing it, right? The self-love piece we always talk about. Um, but I think it's the same. I think we we have we take the audacity to just be like, I mean, I could say America, but I, I think it's everything now. I think that the openness of the connection of the world allows us just to say everybody because we're all seeing everybody now across the world. It's not just we're living in America, we're number one, you know, like we've always said we were in the past. Like we're number one, we're a superpower, we're we're the best, we're the most free. We've always beat our chests in this country to be the best. We're number one. This is where everybody wants to live. But again, what is that? What standard? Like, is it the best to live here? I don't know. I've been in a lot of countries. I mean, I don't know. I've never lived countries for extended period of time, so I can't say without great data, but is it the best? I don't know. I think it's all relative to who's setting the standard for the way of living, right? Like what's Porsche's standard of living? What's Amber's standard of living? What's Michael's standard of living? If we wrote our standards down of excellence, I think we'd find that if we had to pick a place to live and we had did all the data research, and maybe we'd be living in different countries or different parts of this, this country, or I don't know. <clears throat> all, all I know is how can we possibly say <clears throat> we're the best um, when we're not setting proper standards for what that even means uh, in an industry one, you know, like that's, that's, I think a big thing, like the in industry standards of best, everybody throws it around. You know, I, I've worked for many companies that have come in, so they're, they're number one, they're the world's best. You know, I work for a company now that says they're the world's largest billy envelope in the world. Like, they're the best. It's like, I, I don't know if, I don't know if a third party did research on all that. That'd actually be true. Because what are the standards? You're the best because you have the, you sell the most. Because that's what golf was in club fitting. It wasn't who did the best craftsmanship of the clubs and for their people. It was for who, what golf place did the most amount of money per month in club fitting sales, and that became your number one fitter. So see how that is? It's it's merged into one thing, but it's completely two different things. The best salesman. Or the best craftsmen, like looking out for their people. That's completely different, but it's who sold the most becomes the best craftsman on the list. So it's like, okay, <clears throat> so are we are we leading? I guess what it opens up to is are we leading ourselves and the people around us down these false paths of, of zero standards, like what we think is the best, or this person's the best psychologist, this person's the best massage therapist, this person's the best salesperson, this is the best mechanic or the the best the world's best how the fuck right and i'm not saying that i'm not saying that anybody <clears throat> we have to like dig into this thing and, and take everybody in the world and then and then find out who is the best i'm just saying it's a thrown out thing it's a thrown around thing um and as funny as it was last week when i was talking with a buddy we were laughing because it's a joke I started thinking about it. It's like, it's not, it's what we see is who we are. What we see is what we believe. The things we put in front of us constantly on a daily basis becomes who we are in life. That's how we are affected as humans. Like whatever's around me 
I become because these are my comforts or, or I think they are or my standards of what stereo I'm going to buy or lighting or this computer I'm using. Like all of it um, is part of that. And, and why? Because Apple sold me at one point that the Apple is the best computer there is, period. And I, without just knowing anything about computers or like knowing anything, you say, oh, they must be. Because they do the best job at selling that idea to you. Right? So I guess <clears throat> that's the that's the macro, right? The worldwide thing, which is a, a heavier discussion. But like the micro is us individually. What is our individual standard? Are we changing that along the way? Are we checking on that? Are we evolving with our standards and growing them and taking some stuff, adding some stuff? Are we... Are we even looking at it all? Do we even know it? You know, do I know my excellence standard? I don't know. I, I don't think I. I don't think I know mine. I think I have this idea of who I want to be, and it seems to be in the future always. But what what is that doing for me? Like, the present is what I have control of. What am I checking in my standards now? Like what? what if I'm if I'm good now, my standards of excellence are good now, and I'm the best I am now. Well, then the future takes care of itself. But if I'm just focused on I hope to be this person in the future, I think that allows us to be a little. I don't want to say lazy, but a little lackadaisical on the things of getting you to that point, because it's it's over here, right? It's in five years I want to be, in ten years I want to be, in twenty years I hope to be. <clears throat> Amber, you had your hand up. Did you want to say something? Oh, it just was, it was bring uh, a couple of things. One, it was bringing up for me that I remember the first time dad ever told me that the Genuine Leather Company bought the word genuine so that they could call themselves the Genuine Leather Company when in fact their leather wasn't genuine. Um, but they right. bought the word and made it as a marketing ploy. And so to your, in the vein of what you're, talking about it's like anybody can just slap on the best whatever and put that on their business card or their front window or whatever and I love your idea of you know what are the standards who set the precedent who did who what are the you know who are we voting against you know um and then thinking about my friend Stephen always used to say that um humans were so funny with all of our preferences we have so many preferences especially American um or you know like affluent european and things um we have all these preferences i mean how ridiculous is it to stand in any line anywhere and be like okay i would like a soy macchiato but no cinnamon but froth but can i have that coconut milk or like we have all these preferences about you know how to be instead of um you know the general uh just gratitude of how blessed we are just to be able to get like a hot drink period or whatever yeah um and i will just say that i thought that you were going to go in a completely different direction with this um <laughs> when i read the skin and it said best of the best the fucking audacity i thought my gut instinct was like that we were going to go down a completely different path because i was thinking all of us kind of think we're the best not i mean we all obviously have self-worth issues we've all discussed but we kind of tout ourselves as being the best as to we're trying every day. We're practicing every day to be our best self. And a lot of times we even get that flack sometimes just because if I, you know, might be in a different place than in someone I'm talking to or whatnot, they might perceive me as thinking I'm the best when I'm not, you know, I might be a master in a area or in a field or in a specific skill set. Um, people don't always like you for that. And so I was thinking how funny it is that sometimes when you do become good at something, even a sport, Tiger Woods, anybody, when you become some, some people don't get like, you know, Michael Jordan got a lot of undeserved, you know, I mean, he could fly. I understand, you know, he, at his skill, he was unbelievable, but as a human being, he wasn't really doing that great. And like Tiger Woods, like, well, kind of same story, but some people like are just liked for whatever reason and they become the best because something about them is likable or we want to be like them in some illusion mm -hmm. in our mind. And then some people rise to the best truly through practice 
and we hate him for it and and where's that weird line in between um you know too so uh, it's an interesting conversation in every direction yeah i mean it's a it's a um i mean the i think the standards are easy to talk about when it comes to like uh you work for somebody else because they have the the thing they have these initiatives or the these ideas or these responsibilities of your position with them so when you work for somebody or company it's pretty clear a contract or yearly things that have to be achieved that meet these goals requirements um our company has a a list of, of things there are five things that we're reporting every week that we're trying to be more focused on on the rest of the company because it's the company's initiative to put these things in place so we have to keep on reporting those along with um, education and, and there's like five platforms in the year allows upper management to realize who the awards go to the people at the end of the year who's the best at what who's the best area manager who's the best regional manager who's the best distribution manager the bosses the, the air certain products they use those metrics that are already laid out for us to have excellence or the best of the best within a company but those are like following the rules outside of your own self right like amber alluded to a little bit to be the best basketball player in the world takes a very different set of skills or the best golfer in the world very set different set of skills than it takes to be a good human and that's why you see a lot of the times where somebody's the best actor or won all the awards or the best musician or Jordan or Tiger Woods, that you see a, a massive flaw somewhere else outside of the thing they're praised for. Now, in basketball and golf, I could talk in sport, I tell you that there are metrics. These guys work for an organization. They work for a team. They're not just individual awesome basketball players. There is goals required to be the best. Hall of Fame metrics, winning metrics, bonus structure metrics on any any team, golf, basketball, anything. So these guys have an idea of what it takes, what they need to do to get to the things they need, championships, Hall of Fame status, awards. So that metrics are in place, different than maybe my job. You got to write a report. These guys got to do this, but it's there. <clears throat> so is it really that surprising and shocking to all of us when we find out a news article comes out that, Tiger Woods has, has banged every woman on every road trip he's ever been on. That his infidelity is terrible. And his, his marriage is a sham. I mean, it sounds crazy because it's it's a bad thing. This world loves to be in on these bad things, but really, is it that hard to believe that a structured life you can win and an unstructured idea of what marriage might be, love, monogamy, being a dad. Things that we don't, we always talk about in this podcast, we never, that we don't literally learn too well. Not too many people sit down with you and are like, this is how to be a good mother and father. This is what happens after pregnancy, this postpartum. You might have depression. You know what depression is? Like, we don't have those conversations, but you know what? You know how to win a championship with your team in basketball in high school, middle school, elementary school. You know what it means to get awards, first place, second place, good grades, A's, B's, C's. We know the metrics of, the structured world we're supposed to live in. But we, we don't have any fucking sheets over here for I feel sad. How do I get happy? <clears throat> my heart is fucking crushed. I've lost my parents. I've lost a loved one. Uh, any of that. I've lost my job and my house and everything. We don't have a metric for that side. So is it really that hard to believe that somebody can have be raised at such a high level Michael Jackson, let's, I mean, another one. King of Pop, maybe change the music world forever more than anybody ever will in so many ways, but what a troubled life. And why? Because if you go back in his life, there was no, there was no parenting, if you will. It was all about the music. It was all about the structure. It was all about winning the music game. Five kids, one of them's got a pop. But where was the 
stuff. This is what you don't do. Here's a structure of winning as a human being, the excellence of being the best of human. Um, we don't have any of that shit. So, yeah, I mean, it can go either way. I mean, I'm glad you brought it up because it's, it's just, <clears throat> it, you know, the best, I say the audacity of people throwing this on their window of their, their the best like, coffee. It's like, that's the easiest one because I've gone everywhere in this country and the world and I've seen that fucking sign so many times I want to go into a store and strangle the guy without trying the coffee. And the best coffee I've ever had in the world didn't have a sign on it. Because they were just a coffee place that had the beans, they were doing the grinding. They were so busy on the craft that they weren't trying to get people in the door to lie to them by the marketing, right? Putting the bag in every day and letting it sit for 19 hours. It's like, God, dang, you can't put enough sugar and cream in that thing to have that taste go away. So that's the little part, but it every little thing is a seed in our mind. It's like, what could we get away with? You don't have to be a bad human to start to see things around you and start to act as though you could be getting away with anything. You know what? A lot of the people, my clients think I'm the best at what I do. I'm good. I don't need to keep on pushing. I'm the best. But, but, but are you, I mean, is there, is there a possibility that maybe just like relationships, I choose the people I want around me so that I feel better, that I can control the narrative, that I've chosen the customers that come to me because I know how to be the best in front of those type of people, where I don't get anybody to challenge me? Is it possible that I've done that and created a world that I am the best in? I mean, I can tell you right now it is possible because I've done it. I've done it in relationships and I've done it in my work. So where is where am I checking myself? <clears throat> Invite somebody in who I think is better than me to have a, a situation where I could be out, out coached. I could be in a situation where I need to learn something, where I have learned something, I'm learning something. Or humbled in a hard way, like slam the brakes, like, holy shit. I don't know shit. Like, I've been in that situation too. So it's just, where are we setting the fucking standards for, for us to check on not just the best we are like we could talk about this stuff and talking makes it, it, it makes a difference it thinking makes a difference but actionable items that you do are the thing that change the difference all of us including myself easily make excuses on days we know we should be doing something else or want to be doing something else it's easy sometimes like, ah just uh uh, I don't know. I'm just going to lay down for a minute. And then we skip the idea of something or uh, it's just, it's get late. I'll just stop at McDonald's and drive through. I won't eat it again tomorrow. Like, well, I'm not saying anything's bad. I'm just saying we all do it because I don't think that we truly have this metric list of excellence for our self. Can I speak to your point about, remember um, we, a, a long time ago, oh no, I hope my phone doesn't die. I got to plug myself in. Um, a long time ago, we were talking about how something has changed in, like we took a quantum leap in sports because you said like 50 years ago, you know, people couldn't do what athletes can do today until somebody did it and then there it, it it showed a path so that now new you know people that are are professional athletes they're still those type of people but can follow like you said the metrics to yeah. now jump higher run faster throw the ball harder all these different things right that have allowed for us to do more than we've ever done historically as just a us you know humans go mm -hmm. now with that being said, um, what I think that what the angst around this conversation for you know all of us um, is that at what point did we sell out? Because we think about like the seventies or you know whenever it was, I don't know, where you know like Bruce Jenner, regardless of you know what he's doing in life, like 
the point being, we knew he was the best at his sport at the time. The Olympics were like the quantifiable scale of this is the best. These are the best people in the world at this sport. Right. And mm -hmm. so we all knew. And then they would make, we'd all see them compete. And then we know who the absolute best skier was, the best tennis player, the best whatever, right? And then somehow something happened. We reached that tipping point, that quantum leap where now that was possible for many people. And it, well, it's not just one person that's the best. Even if that person gets to the Olympics and wins the gold medal or whatever, there still might be other players out there around the world. They're just as good as him. They just didn't take that route to go get the gold medal or whatever. So at what point did like we sell something out? Because like, I feel like, yes, that's an American attitude of like the best or whatever, or probably any elitist nation at any moment. But I feel like at some point um, it became okay to like commercialize everything or like, you know, just sell the lie constantly, just like all day, every day. And it's with politicians, it's, it's in everything in our culture. Um, yeah. And that happened in our lifetime at some point, because it used to be very easy to see the best, the astronaut, the tennis player, the whatever. Um, I, I think you're, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, I think what, what you're asking or saying is one, uh, America, for sure, other countries too, America, for sure, is a very reward-driven culture from adolescence as a baby all the way up. The way we parent, reward. Don't do this and, you know, eat your vegetables, you get chocolate after. Like, it starts at the very first day because they were like that too. It's not like their parents were bad. Our culture is a very reward-driven system. It's... It, it's demerits or gold stars in school. It's fucking trophies. It's first place, second place, third place. It's rewards, sports, academics, scholarships to get in. Everything is driven by something. We're getting something to do something. Everything in America is like that. Denmark, on the other hand, denounces people that live like that. You want to show up and show up your brand new car? You ain't getting in the restaurant. Because we are celebrating that shit. We don't celebrate celebrity. We don't celebrate. We're a community that takes care of this country and each other. You want to come to dinner? Come to dinner. There's no reservation. There's not a private room. There's not club service. There's not bottle service. There's no reward. Even the clubs. If you have more money, you get reward. You set up an, a, a, a stoop amongst everybody so people can look at you drinking. Everything in this country is built on this reward system. Now, I think when you're saying like, it went from one shift to another. I believe that shift only happened because it's more visible. I think before we can see everybody doing their world through Facebook or MySpace or whatever it was, we first got connected. Forget the social media, internet. When internet came around in the early 90s, it allowed everybody to see everything everywhere. Video, recording, the Olympics. So it's like, okay, now it's everywhere. So now the reward system in America is fucking everywhere. The Olympics is the ultimate, right? Well, it Olympics used to be. Like the ultimate sports mecca, you are that. I mean, fast forward now, that documentary, these guys were are fucking killing themselves in droves. Most Olympians are suicidal. They don't get any money to do anything. Once the After they reach their peak over, moment. it's done. Like once the country's over them, they're over them. So it's not a mecca of winning. It's this reward system that doesn't have anything behind it. And that's what I'm saying. The best of the best is what? It's a fucking joke. The best of what? You know, the other thing you said, too, is like, well, some people didn't go that route. The truth of the matter is a lot of people cannot. There's a lot of people that can blow somebody away in the Olympics that can't even get there because of where they live, because of money, because of time. They have to work, they have to take care of their whole entire family when they're 12. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we're not, yeah. this is not the world's best platform. Even our it's sports, the best of the people that are hockey, allowed to it's all, be dead. Hockey, it's all Russian guys, um, freaking baseball, it's all like South American guys. Like, we don't even have our own people anymore. We buy whatever we want and make it the best so that we yeah. can remain the best.
Yeah, it's not the country. It's, it's, it's not every country in it either. I mean, for years, it wasn't every country. It was the countries that could afford to be in it and benefited for the Olympics to be bid on. So it, it's, again, it's just my point to like, what are we even saying when we think, oh, this is the world's best swimmer? That was allowed to swim. Right. Right. And then what is the standard now? The rest of the world, because we're uneducated about what the standard is, it's just that's the standard. Michael Phelps is the standard of swimming. Well, turn around. This guy's fucking in trouble. He's in jail. He's a scumbag. Like, it's like, <laughs> so the standard of excellence is here, but he's also a scumbag. So, so what's the best? So we have this false ideology of like, what do we think is best? Like, what is best? Why does it have to the be best, best golfer? He's all around the best human being. No, he just best at that one specific small skill in his entire life. And he's pretty shitty at the rest. So should we follow well, this guy? And what does best get us? Like, isn't it better to be equal on a team or what is, what is best? Get, is that not all ego or what are we even saying yeah. when we separate ourselves with the word best i mean why does something have to be so much better than everything really what do you god what do you king what do you the idol yeah. the big you know brass you know trophy it's like yeah what does well, best when you're on really significant yeah when they say when you're on top number two is chasing you to take you down always so it's like the problem with that that truth is in sports, it's, it's it's not the truth. sustainable. It's always, it always happens. It never doesn't happen in sports. It always happens. One becomes two and it goes down a ladder and then you disappear. It always happens because the one truth is when you get to one, you don't know what else to do to stay one. Everything you've done to get there, you start to abandon because you're like, now I got to stay here. I got to change my coach. I got to change my structure. I got to change my eating pattern. I got to get this car, this movement, these shoes, and you don't know what to do when nobody's above you. And by the way, above you, by metric. So we yeah. get we get to this point, we think that nobody's above us. How do I stay here? Because number no, two no. is chasing me. I'm not getting it for you. So then you just, right. what happens is you fall down the ladder and you become 100, and then nobody knows about you anymore, and you, you don't exist. And that's what Olympians go through, that massive depression and suicidal tendencies they all have and they, they've killed themselves is because nothing was above them they hit this ceiling they thought they were the best and then the country is done praising you how do i what do i what do i do and these guys are full of emptiness and loneliness like they're worth shit told they're the best by data and then they're nothing so it's like the whole the whole ranking system again it's very unique to america it's not only america china's going through it too I and mean, there's a lot of places that are first world just like we are that they go through this same thing and are americanized as well but we really started the whole thing of this pounding in our chest we're the best come here freedom is here bring your weak and weary and you know we started this whole thing of like that we can't be stopped bring it come here come here with us you know, celebrate in this wonderfulness that we are. And it's like, we're number one. It's like, well, can we see the financials to that? Holy shit. We owe everybody money. Doesn't seem like number one. Seems like a really, really shady marketing plan to tell everybody we're number one. So it's like, I don't think it's healthy. Like you just said, like Denmark's a good example. Of, of the fact that they don't celebrate things because they want more of this community environment. They want the successful people to reach down and grab the people that are coming up, teach them because it makes their country stronger. They're not looking elsewhere. Like if you're a worldwide celebrity in Denmark, they're like, yo, right here. If you do good, you open an awesome restaurant, you, you're in movies, you're, you become successful, not the best, not a celebrity, you become successful in your craft. Look around at your fellow countrymen and teach them because you will die one day. We need somebody to replace. Like it's like this mentality, the village mentality. You go out and grab water. You go out and grab meat. You go over there and start the fire. Like we don't all have to be grabbing the meat because we think that's the hero coming in when I'm back and everybody claps. Because those are small 
Those are small cues of rewards, by the way. Which service gets the most clout? Oh, the guy coming back with the meat. He was out in the woods. He comes home and everyone's like, eat back. We're all hungry. But like the girls grabbing the water every day isn't very much praise because it's like right over there. But it's an essential part. You die without water. So it's like we have this structure of reward system that sometimes are just subconscious. We don't even know we're doing it. It's because of the situation like that. But we push it to a point where it's just everything's a reward. Everything's the best of. The Grammys were on last night. It's a joke. Like, I just think that all this shit that we do in this country, I went to the races, like going to the golf tournament next week. Everything that's held to like ultimate value in this country today is based off of first, second, third, fourth, fifth, all of it. And then we look into our lives and unless you're running your own business, and even if you are, in your in your companies, they do the same thing. It's it's hierarchy and rankings. I was just gonna say, go to a board meeting, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's you know, the go, best. To Was- go to Washington. Hey, there's always gonna be five assholes that think that they're in charge, no matter where you go, <clears throat> and right. that don't value other people's opinions and anything else other than the win, and it's their perceived win too, the way they want to win. Doesn't matter, you know, if you want purple ribbons on the guy this time. True. So, so look, I think the other thing the importance of is like being number one, whatever we say that is, like jokingly, say you're the best at your thing. What happens is even the best at the growth stuff that we're doing and that you're super aware, you're, you're constantly aware, you're constantly working on it. And you always want to make sure you're not doing the things. But what the reward system boasts for all humans is ego it's undeniable it's hard to get around none of us can get around it it's not like you get there and you're like oh i'm free of it there's nobody up here no we get to the top of whatever we're doing people look at us people come to us whether it's vice or our service or they love being around you because you're a great person like we start to build this i'm pretty good at what i do which it should be a good feeling, right? But also it's like, you know, you got fucking triple quad check that ego portion that's going to sneak into and start to decide for you that I'm needed more than I need. Right. And that's the fucking scary part. It's like, whoa, I need, nothing's given to us. You know, you just talked about, you just came from one of your students, you know, the death, it's like, and then the girl from the restaurant just died in a car accident, like you know, and it's like tomorrow you're replaced, man. Yeah. Like what do you get? What do you... and it's but it's a man, it's a fine line. Like even when we were talking about like because I we've we've had this conversation on multiple levels. Like we talked about, you know, if it all if it all went to hell in a handbasket, okay, we'll just walk the earth, and that's not the it's probably the best thing we could ever do is walk the earth and try to give of ourselves. And that's all we have. And even if we walk barefoot, you know, that would be still okay with us. If that's the only contribution we could give or, you know, when we published the book and I found out that um, you just simply buy the number one bestsellers slot, like that's not a real thing. <laughs> like That's why there's so many of them. Like, uh, um, but also like, should we then give the book away? And does that actually, I, that's the other oops, sorry my alarm was going off um that's the other part is like uh so you said early on in the conversation you know what are the some of the quantifiers and I feel like it's not so much what people say as it is word of mouth like how does somebody local let's say that we live in a village where there are no phones or televisions or internet or whatnot still so we have to like walk over to Porsches and walk over to Mike's and walk over to my house to like see one another or trade apples and oranges or whatever it is how does one become the best doctor in town the best salesperson in town the best healer in town whatever it is and usually without agenda and money and electronics it's word of mouth right because the majority demands you over something else right and that's really the only thing that you can like live with and still that's only 
in your geographical location in your within your reach you know right. potentially because there might be a doctor just as good in the next town or a salesman just as good in the next town or whatnot right um which is a whole other you know plane of thought where you know maybe there's only you know 44 archetypes as humans and we're in every single city in every single place in the world the same exact people you me and portia just somewhere in China and in Thailand and in whatever. I mean, that's a deeper conversation, but uh, of course. Um, but the the best know. in the town, the best in the town or the small town doctor, yeah. is because of limited competition and access. Right. It's easy to become the best when there's only one person that wants to be a doctor in your town. There's only one person well, but, that wants to be a librarian. Well, but there's also maybe it's but 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 when I'm talking about word of mouth, though, I think it's about results. I think they're getting. You know, some people like go to the town doctor, but then they realize that the person that everybody's scared of, the shaman or witch that lives in the woods, actually is healing people. So people start sneaking to see that person rather than the doctor, but it's they it's because it works. And so they say, you know, while they're at church or while they're meeting publicly, oh yes, you know, the doctor or the priest or whatever, but they're hiding, they're they're, you know. <laughs> running off to the woods to get the real tincture that they believe saved their husband or whatever. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> demand does drive some of those, um, you know, who do people think, who do people believe or have faith in? But I think belief and faith is limited in this culture of today's society. Yeah. I think you're talking, I think you're a little, I think you're talking a little bit more about the constructs or what's acceptable in society. We're taking that a little bit to the left on the, the subject, but you're right. Well, I just, yeah, I just mean you're like about when accept, your, your, your acceptance original question what, about what quantifies something being somebody being best of anything. Right, right, but that's a yeah. So to simplify, it's really just access. It's 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 who are we inviting to the competition? That's a simply as said. Like, yeah. is the shaman allowed to come? Is the doctor of Western medicine, is the doctor of Eastern medicine, is the doctor of African medicine, are they all allowed to come and compete on the same platform? The answer is no. So right. that's that's what you're really getting at without going too left. Yeah. It is, is the competition healthy across the board? And the answer is no. It's not like that in politics. It's not like that in, in doctor or roofing or it's not like that anywhere. It's, it's, yeah. it's pay to play a little bit. Um, it's marketing money always drives everything, as we know. If, if it doesn't make money, nobody wants to listen to it. You could sit there and go head to head and be the guy, crafts like oh, I'm gonna make all this stuff. It's like, okay, now shoot me your business model. I, I don't do it for that, I just do it to help people. Okay, get lost. You're next. How much you make? Fuck yeah. No testing. So there is a lot of that going on because this money is so driven. This world is so driven by the dollar, the money aspect, because everything's attached to it. It's how we have to live. I can't sit here and speak to you guys without money. So I have to make decisions in my life that maybe I wouldn't if that wasn't a factor. I have to see people. You know, the other access for talking money is, do you have insurance? Can you afford to go see the dentist? What kind of dentist can you afford based on what you have? Right, like that'll that'll put you in a category of like I can't even think about the best dentist in town. I might have to think about the available dentist in town, which you know might be uh, using like caulk from Home Depot for your cavities. I don't fucking know, but th this is happening around the world. It's kind of funny here, but in the world, people get service whatever they can, however however they can. And the ranking system of them is necessity. It's not fucking Yelp. It's not Google reviews. It's like, yo, does anybody that I know know how to fucking fix my tooth? Because it's like my face is swollen. So, I mean, there's so many levels to this, but, you know, when I, if I'm thinking here, I always think locally in terms of like America, because we have the choice to be idiots and we have the choice to be smart about things here. Not a lot of places do. Some places just don't have a fucking choice. They'll never have the best. And they just feel like surviving days. And that's a whole other topic. But here we have the choice of being fucking assholes or not. 
And that's why I said the fucking audacity behind I'm the best at anything. It's like, what the? How do you even, how, how? Tell me how. You know? I get into that conversation with somebody without being rude. Tell me how. I went to the dentist today. This freaking new nurse or whatever was doing the x rays and like she's jamming this thing. I kept like, I'm like, yo, like gagging on it. Like, what the fuck? The guy comes in, he's like, put, put, uh, go grab the salt, put it on his tongue. It'll help the guy. And not that I give a shit about salt, but I was like, whoa, don't put anything on my tongue. Why? You know what I mean? Like, why? Don't just tell me something you're doing because you're the dentist in the room or I'm supposed to just assume whatever you say goes. You know, my life today, without being rude, tell me why. You're probably right. You know, it creates saliva, it moistens up, it's not dry, you don't have a gag reflex. Awesome. Give me salt. Like, you know, we did the salting, it worked. But my point is, Man, there's a bunch of studies on this, but back in the day, early on, um, like 10 years ago plus, we were reading this study about the whole doctor room visit. How doctors make you feel fear before they even walk in the room, before they say hello to you. You're sitting in a room with a robe. It's cold always. You're fucking freezing. Your body's like this. You're a little nervous about what may or may not go on. Because obviously you've come to the, the hospital for something. Maybe you know, maybe you don't. Results. And this whole time, this waiting process and time, and the whole study was about like, are they fucking doing it on purpose for, from a business standpoint? And there was a lot of crazy, pretty valid shit in it that made sense. Um, but that's what I'm saying. We, we, we think, and I'm not to get on that level, but we think. Oh, I'm going to a dentist. He's a professional in his field. He's the best. He's he's good. So like, I'm just going to go in and what can possibly go wrong? Um, you know, and here, <laughs> and here, unfortunately, we we run into this Sue happy country. So that we don't even care if the guy was the best and he fucked up because we'll sue him. You know, so it's like this, I think this is vicious thing of like, Hold people up on a pedestal and watch them crumble to the ground when they're on the ground. Who's the next on the pedestal? Who's number one now? Because it gets, it just keeps being replaced. When you have a, a system that's based off reward, one, two, three, one never outlives the world. It's constantly getting kicked off. Somebody's trying to either beat them in a good way, like healthy competition. You're just better because I watched number one. And I became better, or number two is dirty as fuck and wants to take one down. We see that all the time. Tanya Harding. She tried to fucking club her competition in the parking lot. She thought like if she beat her down and she just show up tomorrow and she wasn't there, I'll just take the gold. I'm not gonna beat her. I'm gonna actually beat her so she can't show up. So it's like, man, can we can't know, right? Because how do we know? But Situations like that, which have been in sports forever, sabotage. What would the world be like if we didn't have the structure of reward system? One, two, three. What if we didn't have no ones? It was just celebrating success as a generality. In some tribes, in some tribes. In some tribes in Africa, when you make a mistake, you get celebrated so that you learn the opposite of you know, that it's okay, you know, which is completely oppositional to. And there's other countries where they chop your fucking hand off. Right. So I guess what I'm saying is like, <laughs> where on the scale do we have proof of going, hey, you know what definitely works or works better? Or I, I just believe that the reward system always creates, and not to say all bad, but it does what? create competition. Which is good amongst humans. We should have this healthy competition. If I'm, if all three of us were in massage therapy world, that the idea would be, let's all try to get to one together, because we can just rotate that. Like if you're one, two, three, it doesn't mean three could be making more money, truthfully, than one, as skill set, or it could be reversed. 
my point is if if we're sharing with each other and healthy competition, I'm always going to know something you don't and vice versa, even in the same field. Or I just read a book yesterday that you guys haven't yet and knows out. It's like if there was a success in neutrality or, or, or general success, instead of this tiered system where like I'm one, you'll fuck number two. Because that's what it's more like. Number two is like, yep. Yeah. I mean, in a, in a world now, the world I'm in now, the company, it's very much like that. It's like number two, just shit on them. They're not as good as us. And then a guy leaves our company and goes works for number two. And that guy's over there like, we're number one. It's like, what the fuck? Like, and it's like a president. You know what I mean? It's like, so I think we just try to sell. I think big corporations try to sell us on the idea of being number one because it sounds great. If you're part of number one, you're part of greatness. You buy our products for number one. Now you're part of that greatness. You're number one too. Because psychology tells us that we as humans and consumers never do the research necessary to know if they're one or not. We're not doing it. We're not looking anything up. I'm not taking this computer part when I get home and, and checking the bag and going, oh, there is the Intel over here. This chip plugs in here. That's why it's faster and the hardware is better and the, the, the malware is the best. Who the fuck's doing that? Nobody. We just go by base what everybody else tells you. Oh, yeah, iPhone? Yeah, it's better. It's better. Is it better than Android? I don't fucking know. How about how about like, like uh, trends like Lulu Larue or like not Lulu, like whatever those <laughs> fucking pants were with all the animals Lulu, on them? Lulu I mean, Larue. Wife? No, listen, what Lulu pants for kangaroos? The, no, the Larue Lulu Larue pants or whatever. Lulu they lemon. Had, they, they, no, I don't know. They had lady, not the ones with the cool the sweatshirts that you bought us. No, the the pant company. They had um married housewives and single moms all over the country like a pyramid scheme spend tons of money to fill their basements with racks of these yoga pants but they were the ugliest they had like little pigs on them or a million ducks or a million barns or like whoever came up with this concept but then all these women got stuck with basements full of racks of these freaking pants that they're not like giving away or whatever but it's because like someone said oh this is the hot ticket i'm making so much right. extra money at home like uh, just to say what sets yeah. those things off where this is the oh. best thing ever all of a sudden then it's gone oh no you're you're right i mean there's all sorts of the i think the psychology portions yeah. of uh, the mary Kay model you know mary Kay has been around forever they were actually they're actually the other massive corporate event going on at our hotel when we were in Nashville. It was ours and Mary Kay. Wow. It was, it was like, it was kind of mind blowing to me because I've heard about it since I was a little child. I'm like, these guys are still fucking, these guys are still hammering it? Right. They're pulling up with their pink Cadillacs still. I'm like, what is going on? These guys, Mary Kay's still this big? <laughs> um, you know, my company's a $40 billion company and we're sharing this comp with Mary Kay. I think to myself, this is the most elaborate marketing genius pyramid scheme in the planet Earth that still exists. Yeah. And you know why? Not because maybe they're dirty, but not because hate on them. It's because they know the, the, the human nature of people. Bring it in your house and have people over at your house and sell it to everybody you know. It's fun. All the girls get together and we sell each other shit. And it's fucking worked forever. Because it's the psychology of a human, right? And then they just have spent a lot of money on war number one because they are. They keep continuing to show up. So it's like a lot of psychology pieces involved in it. But, man, if we can move away from it in our individual lives and, and just like we always talk about, if we model just our small blip of this universe that we're on here, that, you know, one other person or two other people or three other people or our kids or our friends' kids or whoever we're around is starting to like see or understand differently. That's like, oh, they don't, why isn't she celebrate the rewards? It's like, she doesn't even care about rewards. Like all it takes is to have somebody else think a little harder about what's going on around them. Instead of us like get in their face, you know how that goes. We, I don't, I don't love talking to certain people I know because I just feel like I'm preaching or I feel like, I don't know. 
I just feel like it's like, Ugh, what? So stupid. Because you just don't, if you don't understand, you don't understand, right? And it's not to say that you, you or any of us are any smarter than anybody. Truthfully, is for, for each person has their own way of life. But man, if we can just, uh, I think the, the one thing that really sticks out to me is <clears throat> what is our personal life requisites for our excellence? I mean, that one's a huge one. Like whatever you would see at work or your business or your craft, I think it's so much easier to set those rules. Like, what does it take for me to be the number one sales of my, my, my lotions this month? Like there's metrics and things that happen, but it's like, what, are, what does it take for me to be the number one human I know in my circle this month? Fuck, I don't even know what that looks like. I might be able to write a novel on that. I don't even to want to be number points. one. I don't want to be number one in my circle. I want to be part of a circle. No, I mean, I mean, individually for you, not in the circle. I don't mean that. I don't mean the ranking your circle. I mean, like, how do I become the best human possible for this month so that in my circles, it's being felt? Not number one, being felt, my best human, right? My best example, my best modeling, just my best me constantly showing up because I'm, I have my internal plan for excellence. I'm, I'm, I'm me against me. One and two spots are me and me, right? It's not my friends. It's not what they got. It's not the family life they have, the house they have, the car they had. To truly show up and celebrate somebody's walk up, even if, here's one, I think is really hard. Even if you have a friend that shows up be, because they like that life, they like to like, I got this new fucking car, dude. I spent like a hundred grand on it. It's the best. It's the best car you can get. Even if they're into that and their mindset's still there, that we could practice coming up to it and into it as a celebration of their success in a way of it's not better than mine or yours, or we don't feel a certain way about it. It's just amazing accomplishment for you right like kind of practice some of that with people because it doesn't matter where they're coming from because everybody's not where we are and vice versa so if something's very important to me and i, I love it and it sounds fucking ridiculous to you and you're a really close friend of mine and you love me you gotta find a way for us both to feel good about it like <laughs> Let's not be upset with that person. Like, oh, this fucking guy again. Seriously, does he not get it? Because we all had that feeling with the friends. Like, oh, man, it's not good for you. But is it our way? Again, not knowing what the best is for anybody or even ourselves sometimes. Is it our responsibility or, or, or our position no more. to even get there and say something like that or feel something like that when somebody's celebrating? So, anyway... <clears throat> Portia, you got anything on your mind? I wanted to say that I agreed with Amber when she said that the ego, right? The ego wants to be number one. The ego wants to be. And I think we have to look at it from a place of non-judgment. And so I do think that... We all can be our best, right? Like... You can be successful in your thing and I could do the same thing and I could be successful in it, but we have two different styles of being successful in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, there'll be a lot of people will tell you like, well, don't go into that because there's a million other people who are doing it, but you're not that person. Right. So right. you're, I don't believe like anything is ever saturated, like, because you bring your own unique style to it. Like nobody okay. can else. So I think that, and I also think that like us, we're always striving to be our next best, right? So um, today we have these standards, but maybe a year from now, our standards are going to be different, right? Yeah. Because our life has evolved. We've evolved. We've grown in different ways, or we've, we've decided we've, we've changed what is important to us or, or where we're going, or we've pivoted in this, this area. Right. And um, so I think, yeah, I think we're always 
holding ourselves to another standard, yes. but then still having acceptance <clears throat> today, like for where we are and not like you had said, I have to bring it back to the present. Does I have to be in the, and I, is this who I want to be, but I've got to be okay. Like I'm right here right now today and being okay with that. And so I think acceptance for that, but still always striving for, I like to say vision and yeah. And I just think, um, the left, the democratic society, they're always going to be seeing something as the best, right? But we can choose to see it the way we see it. And maybe that's through oneness or because the ego sees separation, right? The opposite of separation would be acceptance, like no judgment. And so seeing it from like, if we see it from that lens, so like, we can choose to live in a hostile environment or we can choose to live in a loving environment. Like the choice is ours always, no matter yeah. what is going on around us. And so, yeah, so I think of that. And so I think like we can see through the lens of love, even when those people don't agree with us or they, it's okay. We just yeah. allow it, just allow it. Cause it, it doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't, as soon as we react to it, we've given, we've given our power away to it. Right. So I think learning, learning to just accept not only, okay, Harold, just accept for whatever's going on in their world. That's their world. Right. And just like accept it and like us being in non-resistance to it and just yeah. being, okay, that's <clears throat> you. I'm glad that's working for you. Yeah. Like we don't have to try and change their belief, you know, because, because sometimes we, it's so easy to do. We've all been there before. And we're like, Hey, no, why, I want you to see it this way, right? And instead it's like, okay, well, I'll just, I'll just allow it. I'll just allow you to be yeah. that. And because it, truthfully, it, allowing the disagreements between us is so much less than we think. Like there's so much more in common between all of us, even for persons, yeah. if we talk about this extreme left, extreme right. Right. You took those people in our room and go, all the commonalities, there's way more than differences. Right. We spend a lot of time on the difference. So I totally, I'm, I'm, I'm totally into what you're saying because it's like, it's something I'm trying to work on moving forward of, of like, I've been, I've been drawn to people that are, are not on my growth pattern at my level, like still working their way up. I've been drawn to a little bit more broken styles. I've been drawn to people that I think need more guidance. And because I've put the work in, I can help. I want to flip the script on that a little bit because I want to be in more rooms that I don't necessarily care if you're way left or way right, or you think this way about abortion, but it may be different than me, which I don't really fucking care. But on some major things, I want to look, I want to be in rooms with more people that totality, like the, the wholeness of that person has more for me than yeah three little things that we don't agree on and waste time on because you can't take somebody out of an idea of like hey do you believe in abortion no well i do well fuck off yeah like dude we're so many more things that are us that are the oneness you said right um, that can be important that are important that connect more people that are intelligent because i usually what i find is when people have really strong opinions about high level shit they actually are pretty intelligent like their mindset now the yeah. idea might not sound intelligent to you because you think somewhere else but if you if you jump into more of those i want to be in more rooms where i'm i'm pushed and challenged by an idea or a thing or i know more than you like truthfully like they're speaking and i'm like yo wow i feel a little dumb in that character i thought i was i thought i was already i thought i knew this stuff I want to be in those rooms instead of, I love teaching, don't get me wrong, but I can find myself being in the one position if yeah. I only stay over here. I can find myself being in the, I'm the leader. What else is there to know? I want to be in rooms where I can be both. I want to be in rooms where I can be led as well. And I don't want to be separated by the ideas of few when the commonality is of many. And, but most importantly, I don't want to find my room. Carol, get over here. 
I don't want to find myself in a room of another bunch of assholes that think they're the best either that just because they know more than me. I really liked what you were saying earlier as far as the most important thing to me, most like where I feel, come here, where I feel the happiest when I'm in a group situation is collaborative. When so, and, and even the way that I always taught and things, I think students, number one fear, especially when they're getting close to graduate is, did I pick the right thing? Because there's so many in the world. Like there's right. so many heart surgeons, right. so many massage therapists, there's so many dentists, there's so many, pre whatever it is. And how will I possibly have a niche? And, you know, at, we know now because we're old enough to be out in the world that there is enough literally for everyone. There truly is. That's why whenever anyone speaks of lack, it's it's so crazy to me because there's there's enough everything for everyone. Right. Food, resources, water, everything everyone needs in the entire world. There is enough. However, we don't distribute it correctly. Um, But when I when we're in a collaborative state, like you said, and I love a, about, you know, my career choices in life allow me to be in those collaborative collaborative artistic spaces where yeah like we're we're all different artists like in in our you know with body work it's like we all have five or six come here hey different skill sets my dog i'm sorry um five or six different skill sets to where when you get a bunch of us in a room together now we're like the omni healer like now it's like triple a quadruple healing because no, some of us might be doing Reiki, both of, you know, two or three of us are doing Reiki, but guess what? We're all, we're all can hone it in a different way or bring something different to the table in our intentionality or how we lay hands on or what our different skill sets are. So whether, you know, your artist sales, whatever your thing is, heart surgery, you know, if you have people collaborating, now you're talking about the best minds in the room when you've got shared minds, when you've got people able to, you know, have witness and add, gee, this is where I failed before and this is where I succeeded before. And how do we take those two things and make it even better, you know, to make that artificial heart or whatever it is. So guys, I love, love a collaborative. What, what, what you're saying is best what, worst. what you're saying is obviously 100% true. The, the, the issue with the collaborative is the system which we get rewarded on. Right. So have, have you ever seen, what's the fucking, what the hell is that movie with Bruce Willis saving the world with all the freaking Bruce Almighty, huh? Almighty is he God? Huh? Bruce Bruce Almighty is he God? No, no, no. And Bruce Willis. They go on. The, they have to go onto the asteroid and blow it up before it blows the world up. Oh, the oil rigger with Tyler Perry's the fucking daughter in it. Arm anyway, Arm Armageddon. This this movie to me is a perfect example of. It matters when it matters. Collaborative matters when it matters. The world is going to end. NASA, the smartest people in the room, the number one space in the world right now, like goes and finds a bunch of redneck oil riggers to join their team to land on that rock to drill a hole in it to save humanity. Now, right. The that, only only, that true collaboration only happens when there's something that high level like save a human's life okay all the healers in the room i'll take all the healers because whatever it takes if that person lives my opinions are off the side this person's life is the most important right. we get outside of that fight or flight or that massive importance collaboration becomes very hard even though it's the it is the answer because it leans into how am i going to be number one dentist on yelp or you number one dentist at the award ceremony next year, or the, the best, if I'm sharing all my stuff with number two and three. We well, get that's, our, oh, that's what, exactly what's wrong in the world right there. Right. So my mm -hmm. point is, great collaboration. I think I think we've all been a part of it where it feels fucking, this energy level is like amplified. We can do whatever. We're superheroes. We're Voltron. We come together in parts and we're a bigger beast, but... Because our society is built off a structure of reward, we get our companies or us or the people we're with, or it's not always just us making a decision. We get in this narrative, like we, we gotta win. 
Well, and it's also it's wants us. They want us to be separate. They don't want us to come together because that they can't govern a whole. If we if we truly were a democracy, either in the country or in the world, we would be running everything because they would they would fear us and our response to how they react to what we think and what we want as our votes and things. But if they keep we us can. separate and they keep us, they think they, they keep us comp competing and separate and not wanting to collaborate, then we're less, we're much easier to lead and much less powerful. Right. But we can, we, we can do it. It's not just the big government versus us. We can do it. We can choose to do it and we can see results out of it. It's just we gotta we gotta break a little bit of patterns of who we are around and with, and come with that that little bit of vulnerability and that that togetherness of oneness you're talking about. What was important, Portia said, was there is nothing that's oversaturated. The worry that we have that we think that we're gonna join something, how am I gonna win her? Or we're at the top ready and somebody else, a bunch of people are joining, a college program comes out and they're fucking educating a bunch of people in your field, you're like. Holy shit! It's gonna ruin my industry. You know, you've had you've had both sides of that. Right. What Porsche says very important. Nothing in this world has been recreated. One, like get over ourselves. Every idea we have has been already thought about by seven billion people at one point in their life. Yeah. On the time and the planet, we've never been here. And two, there's no such thing as oversaturated on a well-executed, thoughtful, crafted plan idea, service, things that you do. Because right. if you're only competing against you, you're not. If your standards are your standards. You're I'm not doing it. If your financial gain is is helping you live the way you want to live, you are succeeding. If you get off the grid of like, well, let me look out there who, who is better than me or what, what ranking I am, we start to get in that space of like, yo. Right, then we just get I the gotta, stuff out again. I got to run. Right. <laughs> I, I think too, like I would add, um, oh, well, one, I wanted to say you had said like, I want to be in these rooms and I don't want to be the leader. I think allow yourself to always be the student, no matter what room you're in. Like you're going to be in rooms that you don't get to choose to be in. And then you're going to be in rooms that I get to choose to be in. But when you're in those situations, just be the observer, right? And just be the student. I'm always the student. What can I learn from this person? Even if they don't know anything, they don't know oh. a darn thing about what I'm talking oh. about. But what could I, what, what, how could I learn maybe from them, right? And exactly. so then when we do that, we, it's like, it's the whole power thing again. We don't give, we don't give into trying to convince somebody, hey, you should see it my way. Right. And I think too, like, um, People come to you because they like who you are, who you're being, right? You sell them your your personality. You sell them the 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 connection, right? So, yeah. I mean, I've gone to we've all been there. We've gone to uh, doctors, healers, different people, and if they don't have like the connection, then I can't work with you, right? Because I, I can't. It's not going to work for very long because I'm yeah. not going to feel. I'm not going to feel seen. I'm not going to feel heard. Right. And so as soon as we don't have that, it's like, okay, but I could go to this other person over here. Maybe they don't have any, you know, of the same schooling or they didn't go to the same dental school, but yet I like how they operate. Right. I like how they stay in integrity. Or I like how they explain things to me, or I don't know, there's just some kind of, it's, and everything, because everything in life is energy. It's about who you're being. Right. And so I think it's like reminding ourselves, it doesn't matter if a thousand people are going to be up and coming in your career or field or whatever it is, if you know who you're being and you stick to your core values and your standards and like, okay, my most valuable thing is my authenticity. Yeah. Because as soon as I break my authenticity, then I break my connection with people. Right. And so th I think there's a lot of people who they do great for so long but is that sustainable? Because authenticity is sustainable. You're never not going to be able to be yourself. Yeah, that's a good point. That's and that's a good way to wrap it up. That's that's what I meant by the skin, the best of the best. The only time we should consider that statement or a ranking system is with internally with ourselves of being authentic to ourselves, meaning everything else comes with it. You become the best coffee maker, the best ice cream maker, the best massage therapist if you're not focused on the external reward system of the service you're giving 
you're focused on the reward system internally of you versus you and authenticity and showing up and and that's when we feel best. We say. Yeah, yeah. And that's so, yeah, that's when we feel the best, and we know that we've left a good oh, impact on the world. And we we never deny ourselves of like, oh, maybe I'm not selling the best coffee. No, you never feel like that when you're in your authentic self, when you're showing up to work happy, and you're like, you can't wait. To get you there. believe in it. You believe. Yeah, in you're it. in it, and yeah. and people say this, and people, you know, other people are like, ah, oh, it's a hippie, hippie fucking thing to say. It's like. I can taste the quality in the coffee. I can taste the love that people put into right. it. I can taste the blood and sweat. I can taste the fucking death. It's true. The authenticity. Because it's true because we pass energy amongst right. things and people. It's not hippie. It's just reality. It's science. It's it's transferring energy amongst people. So it's like, look, that's what I'm saying. The best of the best should live within inside of us. And then everything that comes out of us will become good, the best, better, whatever the fuck it is that they rank it on. But I, I think I think you'd probably wake up one day unplugged from the system, ranking yourself with internally your thoughts and showing right. up in this. And then you wake up one day and somebody call you like, dude, do you know you're the number one fucking seller or the number one? And you'd be like, huh? Right. And that's the like, the kind of like crap you're like, what? Because you're you're unaware of what it means to be in the the the, the reward system. You're just hyper aware of what it means to be your quality self. Right, your own reward system. Right. Yeah. So fucking. Yeah, great way to end it. That was that was uh. Yeah, yeah. That that wrapped it up perfectly. It was one of the better ones we've had, in my opinion. It's actually the best. <laughs> I think I'm gonna rank this number one on our. our <laughs> Our Zoom meetings Woo. are going to go on right now. And I, I think too, this like it, the best. it doesn't matter what That's someone, because right. you're always going to have people that aren't going to like the thing that you, you know, they're going to like your coffee, right? And that's okay too. Totally. You know, but you're, but for every one person that doesn't like it, you have 10 people that do. Totally. And that's all that matters. One person, right? The one. And right. maybe somebody drinks your shitty coffee because they really just like hanging out with you. Right. <laughs> Or maybe, yeah, maybe everybody's taste different. Maybe shitty, shitty right. is good taste for them. Exactly. Love shitty coffee. I think Jay Rice is that person. I think Jay Rice loves shitty coffee. <laughs> and he's, every time he has it, we stop at a gas station, the shittiest burnt coffee. He drinks it and the look on his face is like, yeah, fucking flaming yawn for the first time. It's <laughs> unbelievable. So, on a good note, on a good note, his mom is uh, moving into Guthrie tomorrow and is doing better every day. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, let's pray for her too. Um, I mean, everybody, obviously. I mean, it's been a, a crazy time. Uh, a lot of people have been getting sick and had some deaths along the way. These two Amber told me about and Lane's mom and Jay's mom getting sick. So let's just keep all of our people in our prayers. And, um, you know, the energy is the big thing. I think we ended that really well. It's like we, we're we here to pass it along in the best way possible. So uh, let's continue to do that. I appreciate you guys entertaining my rants always and uh, and contributing because that's important. That we have a discussion that we're not just talking at one another. We're talking to each other. So <sighs> thank you guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. Bye, guys. Good night. Night. Have a good hey, week. You guys are the best. I love oh, you. Best. This was the best. Best Zoomers. This is the best. <laughs> Bye. Bye.